Good morning, Garden Baptist Church, and welcome this morning. We have another opportunity just to bring our worship to our great and awesome and amazing God. I just want to read this morning from Psalm 63. It says, You, God, are my God. Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you in a dry and parched land where there is no water. I've seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory. Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live. And in your name, I will lift up my hands. I will be fully satisfied as with the richest of foods. With my singing lips, my mouth will praise you. And this morning as we gather online, we have that opportunity to let our lips praise our God. It says, I'll praise you as long as we live. So as long as we are drawing breath, let us praise God. Let us use our lips, our mouths, our whole being to be a living sacrifice of worship to Jesus because He is worthy of our praise. Let's join together and pray and then we will uh, continue to sing this morning. Father God, we just honour you this morning. We just say that you are our God. We surrender to you this morning and acknowledge your Lordship over us. Father, we just come to you, even though physically we're separated in spirit. Lord, we're joined together in one heart and one unity to worship you and to honour you. We come to learn from you this morning, Lord. We just pray that you be glorified in everything we do. Father God, I thank you that you see us. Thank you that you hear us. Lord, nothing goes unnoticed because of your incredible love for us. Lord, we love you this morning and we just want to honour and worship you. Amen. So I just invite you to worship with us wherever you are. Feel free to stand up, to jump around your lounge room and just let your lips praise God this morning. Christ be 
my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Till I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God I love you Lord Oh your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head will sing of the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest night. You were close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. In the goodness of God Cause all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able just want to come before you today and just say thank you for your goodness as we sing and father we just thank you that you watch over and guide us and lord we just thank you for being with us today in your name amen well good morning it's great to be with you again and i'm going to do your announcements this morning and i'm standing on a new stage and it's, I'm close to the monitors and I've got to tell you, it's really interesting that I came in here at 2 o'clock yesterday afternoon and, uh, and the, there was stuff everywhere, all the music gear was stacked over there and there was sawdust and bits of timber and I came in this morning and here it was, all done. So thank you for that hard work. And folks, that reminds me that you know when we give to God and give to God's kingdom, we give to so many things. And uh, it's not just about giving money to the church; it's about giving to the ministry of God for the for His kingdom economy. And uh, it does help us to present quality items like this and to be able to put stages in and things like that. But they're a little bit sort of like what you might call, I suppose, tangibles on the outside. But I just want to encourage you that as we go into a time of just thinking about giving this morning, that you consider just what the kingdom of God is like and how we can help people by giving.
It does go into our church family and our church family uh, ministers to so many different ways. We minister to missions overseas. We look after our local community as well. And so if you um, are joining us in that way to worship God, I call it worship in giving. It's a great way just to think of it. It's about just uh, the heart that we have. So we have different ways to do that, as you can see on your screen. We can give um, electronically, we can give in person here, but uh, we encourage you that during these COVID times that you make a, 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 a way or means to do that effectively. And uh, we appreciate those who are doing that so regularly and it just honours God when we do that from the right heart. It says in Corinthians that God loves the heart of a cheerful giver. So we don't give out of compulsion, we don't give out of duty, we give out of our love for God. And uh, it's a reflection of that, I suppose. So I'd just like to give thanks and pray for the offering now. And uh, then we'll have a look at our, our time of prayer as well and just the things we need to bring before God. Lord, we thank you, Father, that when we look just outside our windows and our doors this morning, Father, we can be thankful for all of your creation. We can be thankful also, Father, for what you uh, provide for us in so many ways. Lord, in abundance, we are so thankful for that. And Lord, we pray that, Lord, as we, the money is gone through electronically and as it's been collected, Father, and distributed, Lord, it won't be a case of, Lord, saying, what will we do? But, Father, we want to ask what you want us to do. Father, we want to give to your kingdom. Lord, to see your kingdom grow, to see, Lord, your kingdom expand, for people to come to know you, Father, to be able to, for us to be able to serve you. Lord, we just give you thanks for that. And Lord, we just ask these things in your name. Amen. Well, as we say, we can give thanks for the stage this morning and also the prayer points that uh, probably some of them will come up on your screen in a moment. But uh, the, you know, the main ones I suppose we can pray for, and it's really important that we keep praying for rain. Our valley needs rain. It needs not just a little bit of rain. It needs an abundance of rain. We need to keep praying for leadership too. Both, you know, we can go for all sorts of levels. We've got our church leadership team as we try to work our way through how we're going to get back to face-to-face -to -face church with all the different regulations and restrictions. Really need wisdom for that. We need to pray for our local government as they start to open up things again and start to do things. Pray for Mayor Tanya and the team that are doing such a great job serving our community. We pray for our, our local government, our state government, sorry, for Anastasia and her team who are trying to best protect, I suppose, Queensland by closing the borders to some states. But also, just, you know, that wouldn't be easy to do. They, these folk really need prayer. We need to cover them in prayer. And we need to pray for our federal government as well, who takes the borders even further out to the security of our country and as they meet with the, the, the premiers of all the different states that they get together as a national cabinet to, do, to discern I suppose the way forward for our country. So we need to keep praying for those guys just to lift them up before you. Just want to pray for those in nursing homes this morning as well, the ones around our valley and beyond, the brothers and sisters in Christ who are there who pray for us as a church. They might be able to come to church, but they're praying for us so, so diligently and so faithfully. <clears throat> need to just pray for the uncertainty of unemployment because as you can see in Victoria, pray for Victoria as well and just the, the decisions they have to make. But when we understand that in a greater sense that there's a whole lot of industry and the commerce that's going to suffer because of that and it's going to be flowing through the system in Australia, we need to pray that people won't be fearful and they, that we pray for security and jobs as well. Lord, we just need you. Father, we just need you in this time like no other. So let's just... Um, Spend some time in prayer. Put down your cuppa maybe or your piece of toast. I don't mind if you eat in church this morning. Just put them down for a few moments while we pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, oh Lord, so many things. Sometimes Lord overwhelms us. And, uh, but Lord, we know that in your kingdom, Father, your hand is on us. And Lord, we pray, Lord, just for the leadership all our structures of leadership. Lord, just give us wisdom. Lord, we pray for our church leadership team, first and foremost, Lord, just lift. Lord, just cover them. Father, protect them. Lord, we don't want to be fearful. Lord, we want to do the right thing, Father, by you. And Lord, we want to be a good witness in the community. But Father, we need to, Lord, work through the different restrictions and Lord, just be honouring in all we say and do. And that's so important. Lord, we pray for, for Mayor Tanya and the, and the councillors, Lord, and we just ask that you might continue to be their portion, Father, and guide them. Father, they might know your presence and all just have affirmation that, Father, as they try and work out what's important and the priorities of our community in the Lockyer Valley, Father, just give them that affirmation there. Lord, we pray for our state government. 
and all that they have to discern and Lord the decisions that are made and Father we pray that you might continue to Lord provide for our state in that way and Lord just give clarity there as well and we pray for our federal government for Scott Morrison and the government Lord as they try to work out how much more money Lord they can provide for support the communities that are so desperately in need because of uh, closing down of commerce and industry and Father we just pray that uh, for all of the team Lord the leadership team just for your protection over them as well but we do lift up to our brothers and sisters of victoria lord we know they must be going through such heartache at the moment and lord so much uncertainty in all these things father we pray that you'll be their portion that father people will come to know you they will seek you out lord they will sit at your feet lord and uh be ministered to by your spirit but we pray draw people to you lord just give them that hope and that encouragement Lord, we thank you for our brothers and sisters in the nursing homes around our valley who and our aged facility, care facilities, Lord, that diligently pray for churches in the valley. And Lord, we pray that you might just bless them as they've blessed us, Lord. It's, it's, it's really humbling, Father, and we thank you for that. And, and Lord, we just ask that you might continue to walk with us. Lord, for each person in their homes this morning and those who are listening to us, Lord, during the week, Father, we pray that they'll be just, Lord, blessed and affirmed in you. Lord, as we open your word now, Lord, and we worship in your word, that, Lord, that you'll speak to us clearly, that, Lord, that your spirit will intercede on our behalf, that it will give us clarity, give us, Lord, discernment, give us wisdom. Lord, give us teaching, we pray. Lord, we thank you for that. And, Lord, as always, the words that, Lord, I speak, Lord, I pray your words in your name. Amen. Well, it seems a bit surreal standing on the stage and looking out and I use this word stage because I'm not a performer and uh, as we c- contemplate the God's word today I want you to open up to Colossians and uh, Paul wrote this letter to the church in Colossae and he was trying to encourage them to, to, to hang into what, into what they were doing to know that there's a, an end game at play and don't forget this is early times in the life of the church and in that time there was lots of uncertainty around as well there was some strange teaching coming in there were some strange rumors coming in and and Paul is speaking to that through this letter and we had a conversation last week and that's why I've titled this message today ready set now because we were people just hanging out to come back to church and and they've been just texting me and let me know that oh Pastor Doug we'd love to come back let us know I was even talking to a gentleman in the week during the week and he said oh we're starting church back to face to face on Sunday and I said no we can't just yet we've just got to be a little bit more patient there's some things that come out in this message, in this little passage we're going to read today, these four verses that talk to us about patience and endurance. And we're going to go through those in a moment. But first, I'd just like to remind you or reintroduce you to this, this character. His name is Scat. Scat is, is what they call in the industry the running gag through the whole of a movie. And so he does his little bits and pieces and it's almost like he's responsible for the ice age and the, and the, the glaciers starting to shift because he is so committed to grabbing hold of his acorn and protecting his acorn. He wants to take it and he wants to keep it somewhere safe but he is so committed he goes through so much even to the point of risking his own life. Through the whole of the, of the franchise, the six movies... From 2003 to 2016, he just keeps this running gag going with him battling all sorts of elements but trying to hang on to that acorn for dear life. He perseveres through that whole time, through all sorts of inflictions, all sorts of dangers. You know, and I was reading a a review about this and it was saying that some people are saying that, that Scat is like Jesus, that he would lay down his life for that acorn and Jesus lays down his life for us and I think that's a very good analogy to have so this is scat so I want you to think of scat as we go through it's the last time you'll see him I did toy with the idea of putting him on the slides but I wanted to make sure that we had that information in place let's have a look now at the qualifications for impatience as we look at the at the letter of Colossians so reading from verse 10 and it says and we pray this in order that we may live a life worthy of the Lord and we may please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened and with all power according to his glorious might so that we may have great endurance and patience. 
joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. For he rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption and the forgiveness of sins. Lord, I just thank you, Father, for this word that's so encouraging. Just reading it, Lord, encourages me. Father, I pray that those words also at home have encouraged others. Lord, I pray that those who are present with us today, Lord, our worship team, Lord, it's encouragement to them. And Father, we just thank you for that. In your name, amen. There are five significant exercises in the Christian walk. And I just want to review these quickly, just to encourage you, maybe just get your brain ticking over and say, has he got this right or not? Because, hey, uh, sometimes we all have different ways of looking at how these things come out. The first one is faith exercised in relationship. And that is through Jesus Christ. So our faith brings us into relationship with Jesus Christ. And people watch that, that walk, I suppose. They watch that exercise that we do. It's also love exercised in grace. We wouldn't have the love of God if it wasn't for the grace of Jesus who died on the cross. The grace of God who sent his son to die to, in our place. And so we have love that we can exercise in grace Firstly, with our Heavenly Father and also with those around us. We have a humility exercised in mercy. When we're humble and we show mercy to others, we know that we've received mercy from a Heavenly Father. Then we have the next one, and that is patience exercised in character. And we're going to talk about that a bit more deeper and how, that, um, how patience is a part of the character we have in the kingdom of God and when we have fellowship and we walk with him. And endurance is exercised in growth. The Bible talks about that in various stages and forms and we'll come have a look at that as well. I've been reading a book recently. We've been doing a study book in our home group called The Stuff of Life by Carl Face. And in the chapter we were doing this last fortnight, he talks about his golf swing and about how he just wants to play golf as good as he possibly can. And I've got a quote from him that starts off this chapter that talks about, I suppose in all things, just understanding what God's about. But I thought it was very, very appropriate for today. I just want to share it with you, these first few words. I call it the essence of wanting it now. And of course, we're talking about uh, patience and waiting for God and waiting to see what he's going to do and how that's, um, we need to reflect that in ourselves. And so this is what this little quote says. It says, my ability grows, so as my ability grows, so does my expectation. As my desire grows, so does my anticipation. And it's interesting that expectation and anticipation come with when we start to get good at something, when we start to want to advance, when we start to want to go forward, and yet sometimes we feel like we're being held back. And I think patience plays a big part in that because when we're impatient, we think, well, we're ready now. And I've added a little bit to this, so I do apologise to Carl, uh, but uh, I thought this is another way of just bringing those two sta uh, that statement together. When, when expectation and anticipation are met, aren't met, impatient grows. When expectation and anticipation aren't met, then expectation grows. And that's something to remember that as we process things in our life, and we process even just our Christian walk, that we need to remember that if we're impatient, then we're actually leading into other things that happen. First of all, it's evident that patience is a fruit of the Spirit. In Galatians 5.22, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Now you might say, well, where is the word patience in there, Pastor Doug? I've got to let you know, that in the Greek word, the Greek word for patience, for long suffering, for forbearance is hypomone. And it is used in all these verses I'm using this morning in a different way, shape, or form. So when you see perseverance, forbearance, endurance, they mean the same thing. They're actually a different way of saying the same word. And it's the Greek word that comes through in this case. And so if we understand that when we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, when we're walking with God, part of our outward nature is the fruit of the Spirit. And one of those is, is forbearance or it is patience. And so people see us and say, oh, you're a believer in Jesus Christ, or you're a Christian or you go to church. Are you actually exhibiting patience? Or you just sort of leave that one because you allow yourself the indulgence of being a little bit impatient because people just tick you off sometimes you just want, and strangle them. 
But see, all that's part of it. So it's part of the fruit of the Spirit. So we can't just say, well, I'm just an impatient person. We're going to say, well, I'm a person who really wants to do what God wants me to do in his life and walk in fellowship with him. And so we need to reflect upon that. In Luke 8.15, it says these words. It says, But the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering produce a good crop. You see, good fruit or product comes from persistence. And persistence helps us to work through things. And when we read that passage in Luke, it talks about the quality of our character rising up in a situation. It talks about the fruit of the Spirit is evident in our hearts. And so when we're involved in things, when we're working on something, when we're doing good works, if you want to use those terms, then that is part of who we are as well. That is part of that development. And we need that to be evident for those around us. It's evident also in... The participation in life, just doing life, perseverance is evident. You may say, well, that's a no-brainer, and uh, in, in that way it is. But we actually, there's a lot of effort in life. I don't know if you've ever noticed that. Sometimes it's an effort to get out of bed. <laughs> Sometimes it's an effort to step up on a step. And um, I was very fearful that the stage would be too many steps up, and then I'd have to grunt my way up here. But thankfully the guys thought about that, and so the stage is just that comfortable step for me. But participation in life sometimes gets us down, and we become impatient. In Hebrews 12, 1, it says these words. I just want to encourage you with God's word today. That as we go through these, you want to write them down or do you want to record them or do you want to send me an email and just ask, hey, look, can you just send me some more information about this? I'm quite happy to do so. It's no problem at all. It says in Hebrews 12.1, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And then it says, let us run with perseverance, the race marked out for us. When we're doing life, we're in that race, in inverted commas. It's marked out for us. Several weeks ago, I talked about runners staying in their lane and how it's marked out quite clearly. And it's the same thing, is that that perseverance comes when we participate in life. And so we can't be too precious because it's life. Some people have what we call an easy life and some have a little bit more of a difficult life. But it doesn't matter because... It's about how we participate in life and we need that perseverance. We need that to patience, I suppose, to come out as well. And so and when we have a look at that deeper, it comes out in this way. The challenges are met, they're not avoided. I don't know if you've ever thought about that before, but challenges are met, they're not avoided. You see, perseverance is just parachute in. It's part of who we are when we participate, when we work with people, when we work in our jobs. Sometimes a, a task is so hard. There was a task I was given many years ago working on a property and the boss of the property, he decided that the 2,000 acre cultivation paddock had weeds growing in it, but not enough to put a tractor or a machine on it with big uh, sprays, but he decided that you could ride around on a horse with a hoe and you could hoe up the weeds just riding across the cultivation. When the day I started, there was 40 kilometre hour winds blowing from the southwest. And I was on a horse that used to be a polo cross horse. So he was very skittish. And as soon as you moved the reins, he wanted to go into a canter. And I had this hoe, really long-handled hoe. And I'm riding around in this paddock and just trying to chip, ho chip weeds. And it was just boring and it was just lonely and it was just monotonous. And then you'd chip for a little while here, then you'd canter over to the next one or trot to the next one, which might be 50 metres away or 100 metres away or 200 metres away. And then as soon as I brought the hoe down again, the horse would side suck and he'd go sideways to bring him back. And now he said, look, this is the hoe, old fella. And I'd hoe again, leeching over and then put the hoe on my shoulder and canter. <laughs> Went on like that for two weeks. And in two weeks, my Miss Cherie brought up lunch for me one day and she brought, met me at the corner of the paddock and she looked out and she said, what have you done? <laughs> I said, can't you see all the dead weeds? And she said, no. And I said, yeah, that's what it feels like. You see, folks, we still have to do what we have to do. And the great thing about it is we don't do it alone. And if I had realised that then, I mean, I was a, a believer in Jesus. I was a Christian back then. But I didn't fully draw upon the strength of God. And in Philippians, it tells us when we're doing things for God and we have this sense of, oh, I suppose, overwhelmed, just, oh, I can't keep going, that it says that I can do all things through him who gives me strength. It's when we're doing what we're supposed to do that we can overcome impatience, we can persevere, that we can get the job done. 
And sometimes if you need to, you just need to look at it one paling at a time. Just look at the fence. I just looked at one If I had just looked at one weed at the time, I said, all I've got to do is get this weed. If I looked, kept looking at the 2,000 acre cultivation paddock, I'd be, get so depressed. But God says he gives you strength. His strength through him. I want to encourage you with that today. That when we're participating in life and it gets hard to draw upon God's strength. The great thing about perseverance also is that it perfects our Christian character. It actually makes us better. So if we have an easy life and want for nothing, then we don't really learn anything. But part of our growth in God and our growth in life comes from having that persistence in our life and it helps us perfect our character and our Christian character. James 1.4 gives us this encouragement. It says, let perseverance finish its work. Finish its work. That's what I put in red. Don't let perseverance start its work. Don't let perseverance get you sidetracked. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete. Wow. You may be mature and complete. So not only is, is it necessary for us to have it in our, our lives, but it's also part of our growth. It helps us to perfect our character. When we come across these things that are, are hard to fathom and are hard to process and just annoying, we've got to start thinking, well, hang on a second. If God gives me strength to do this, this is going to make me a better person. This will make my character better. And so we understand that as we... Uh, it says at the end of that verse, we lack nothing. Because if we allow that to develop in our lives, then we become mature and we lack nothing. So it's actually pretty essential. It's not like, oh... I'll choose this off the menu, I won't choose that off the menu, but I need, I'll choose this off the menu. It's part of who we need to be as we grow and process in God. And it also, it, we understand that, that our response then reflects our growth. So how we process initially, we may feel that it's just too much and we react poorly and then as we sort of learn, okay, I've got to persevere and get the job done and you keep going, you keep going, then it actually helps us to grow and it reflects that growth, how we process that, how we respond to that. There's a great verse in Colossians 1.28 that, uh, that, that teaches us about this. It talks about teaching, uh, experience and teaching. And this is what it says. I haven't got it on the screen for you today, but I've got it written down here, so I'm off to just listen. Here, he is the one we proclaim, that is Jesus, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom so that they may present, so we may present everyone fully mature in Christ. Part of it is understanding and working our way through that there are people in our life that give us teaching and that give us experience. But also it's what we do. If we go through a situation and we handle it poorly and we don't learn from it, then we're not being taught. We have that experience. It could be a negative experience. But if we reflect upon and say, hey, this is actually might be good for me, this might be part of perfecting my character, then we actually start to pull it into ourselves and we start to hang on to it and we start to say, okay, let's, how can I fathom through this? There's many times in your life, I'm sure you can reflect right now, where something's been really, really difficult. And you thought, why am I doing this? I shouldn't have to. This is beneath me. Nothing is ever beneath us. Because we need our character to grow. And that takes resistance. That takes the force against us so that we, we work through that and become, I suppose you want to say, a better person for it. And if you're a believer in Jesus, you're walking with God and you understand he's on your side and he's given you the strength, then you know that this is for my good. And I want to be able to prosper in this. When we reflect upon these, it's always good to just have that attitude it's, uh, to, to be appreciative and to give thanks. And, uh, so, and that's what it says in that passage of Scripture. Towards the end of it, it says that we need to give thanks to our Heavenly Father. And in 1 Thessalonians uh, 5.18, it says these words. It says, give thanks in all circumstances, not just the ones that it feels really easy and good for, but give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Jesus Christ. Wow. You know, how can we be so selfish to think we're, it's, some things are beneath us? How can we be so self-absorbed we think, I shouldn't have to do this? When the message that God is saying today is, yeah, no, you're going to have to do it, but you're going to benefit from it because you're going to grow. And this is what my purpose for you is. It says, give thanks in all circumstances. I don't know if you've ever done any sort of cross-training and you've, you know, you're taking yourself over and you've put yourself in an, out of your comfort zone and you might be riding a bike or you might be running kilometres or something like that and you get to a certain point in your training you think, I've just had enough, I can't keep going. This little voice in your head, I suppose, says, oh, no, just keep going because you're going to benefit from this. 
That's what God is saying about us and saying to you today, that you will benefit when you persevere and give thanks in all circumstances. The psalmist who you know, went through so many things, he said these words. He said, give praise the Lord, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his love endures forever. You know, if God was hitting you with a whip and kicking you in the stomach and saying, you vile, foul creature, then you wouldn't persevere. But when we understand that what we go through develops us out of love, then we have a different understanding. If you're trying to train a dog, for example, you need to show that dog correction, you need to admonish him, you need to you know, tell him when he's doing something wrong, but you reward his good behaviour and you develop a bond and relationship with that animal. I've seen that happen with cattle dogs. I've seen it happen with sheep dogs. And most, I've done it myself very frequently with pig dogs who have chased feral pigs. Is that you develop that bond and you teach them how to do something. But sometimes you have to persevere. God perseveres with us more than we can imagine. He does. He just loves us so much. His love endures forever. And he's saying, look, just come to me. If you're struggling, come to me. And I'll help you to overcome and help you to persevere. Worship team, if you'd like to come up, we're bringing our message to a close and I thank you for your work this morning. We're going to sing a song at the end of the message and it's Great Are You, Lord. Your breath in our lungs, you pour out in perseverance for your kingdom. I love those words. It just says that when we walk with God, he fills us, he enables us. But just to finish off a couple of things if I can. The motivation for the patience that we have. If you haven't worked it out already, that it's about God's love and what he wants for us. The motivation is just think of these words as well. That when you're thinking it's too hard, I don't feel like doing that and it's annoying me, just think of this. That he rescued us from the dominion of darkness. God rescued us from the dominion of darkness through his son, Jesus Christ. He brought us into the kingdom of the son of God. So he took us from the darkness and he brought us into the light of the kingdom. And he did this for the redemption and forgiveness for our sins. See, God doesn't want you to stay where you are. He wants you to develop. He wants you to grow. And sometimes the circumstances we find ourselves in are great opportunities for him to do that if we don't give up. If we just like scatter and we hang on to that acorn for dear life, we persevere through glaciers and through floods and through volcanoes and through stampedes of animals, all those things. We persevere and we grow. There's one verse I'm going to leave you with this morning before I pray. And it says this, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience. So all those things. The word clothe there means to invest. It means to put into. It means to grasp hold of. It means to act into. It means to participate in. If you want to read it another way, it says, Therefore, as God's cho chosen people, holy and dearly loved, participate in compassion, participate in kindness, participate in humility, participate in gentleness, and participate in, in patience. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that you love us, that you want us to grow. Lord, you want us to, Father, prosper in you. Father, not in the world's way of prosper, but Lord, just prosper in our character. Lord, that we may be encouraged to others around us. We may be a light in our community, Lord, and we're a light in our group. Father, you've chosen people this morning, I know, to hear this message, that, Father, they will grasp hold that when it comes to the end of all things, the push comes to shove, that, Lord, that in their patience will be rewarded if they persevere because you want them to grow. Oh, Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus, who died for us. And Lord, as we sing this next song, Lord, fill our lungs with your breath that we may, Lord, participate with you, fellowship with you, and Lord, walk with you this week. Oh, Lord, we thank you for this in your name. Amen.
Shout your praise. 